Hey guys, welcome to Photo Beast. Today I wanted to go over what's the difference between shooting with this type of camera as opposed to over here I've got four professional cameras. These are called full frame and over here is a crop sensor. The first thing that you're going to discover is on the back of your cell phone you'll have multiple lenses, right? which is the same here. We have multiple size lenses. For instance, if I wanted to shoot a wide angle shot, I would need something like a 16 or 24 millimeter. And that's where the wider angle lenses come in. So I cannot shoot a wide angle shot with a telephoto lens. So basically, with bigger lenses like this, you get one photo length and that's it. So I can't do portraits unless my subject is maybe 50 yards away. So you have to have different lenses for different situations. So that's where this guy wins because you've got multiple lenses in one location and it's also cheaper. Now the lenses on the mirrorless cameras are way more expensive because the glass, as you can see, is bigger. It's airtight. It's made in a factory where there's no dust particles and there's a lot of time and money that goes in these lenses. That's why they cost anywhere from 200 to $20,000. When this lens was brand new, it was $10,000. Now I also wanna show you something else. Now on the front of here, you can see this is the sensor on a full frame camera. If you look at the sensor on this guy, these are a lot smaller compared to that. So that's where this one wins because this one gets more information. It gathers more light and gets more information. Light is everything when it comes to cameras and lenses. The bigger the lens or the bigger the diameter of the lens, the more light that comes through there. The more light that gets to the sensor gives you more information for better editing and better quality images. And that's why these cameras will cost anywhere from 500 to, I guess you could say about $8,000 now. This one here was about $4,000 when it was brand new. It was $38.99. This is a Canon R5. That is a full frame sensor. They also make Micro Four Thirds, which is a whole nother ecosystem of camera sizes. But for your everyday photographer, you would either use what's called a crop sensor, which is a little bit smaller than the full frame, as you can see. And this is a crop. Now, the funny thing about a crop sensor is even though it gets less light, it's still a very sought after lens because it gives you a crop factor. What it would do is it takes the actual image you're looking at and it crops into the middle and then it pulls it up to actually make it look bigger. So this gives you a 1.6 times crop factor with Canon. Now with Nikon and Sony, you get 1.5. So basically a 400 millimeter lens with something like this could become, uh, I guess you could say 700 millimeters, give or take a few. And the cool thing about it is, for instance, this is an 800 millimeter lens. With the Canon R7, this gives you the effective focal length of 1280 millimeters. That is kind of insane in the camera world to be able to shoot subjects that far away at 1280 millimeters. Now there are pros to cons in shooting distances that far. The pros are you get the subject closer, but the cons are if there's any I guess you could say humidity in the air or water particles or anything like that, dust, dirt, whatever, it's going to show up in the pictures. So sometimes shooting far away doesn't give you the image that you think you're going to get. Now that we've went over the camera sensors and things like that, you might ask yourself, well, I want to get into photography. Do I need a mirrorless camera or DSLR? Now, a mirrorless camera basically doesn't have the mirror in the front it's less moving parts. About five years ago, these cameras came out. So this is basically the technology that most photographers are using today. A DSLR is an older type camera system that doesn't have all the features that a mirrorless has. So if you're looking to get into photography and looking to get a professional grade or entry grade camera, I would recommend mirrorless and not DSLR because that has a mirror, which is more moving parts. It also has an objective viewfinder. So when you look through it, you're not seeing the exposure that you're normally gonna get. So these also help new photographers by having this electronic viewfinder or EVF, which is a lot easier to basically see the exposure to get your shots. Now, say I wanna get into photography and I wanna be a portrait photographer. Would this work or would I need a mirrorless camera? 
Well, I would recommend getting a mirrorless camera because mirrorless cameras you can sync up to using flashes or strobes. A flash is one of those big flashes that go on board on the camera, on the top of the camera, and this is basically called a hot shoot. And you can program that flash to shoot soft light or harsh light depending on, or brighter light, I guess you say, depending on the circumstances. You can't get a flash to pop off this unless it shoots off the back. Now, when you shoot a flash directly face to face on the subject, it leaves this very harsh light and it's not flattering, especially for women. Now, with this, when you put the on-camera flash on, you can actually move the flash around and bounce it off the ceiling or bounce it off the walls using what's called bounce flash. Bounce flash, as you can see in these images here, it illuminates the person, it takes off any bad shadows, and you can make very flattering light. And there are numerous ways to light your subject to make them look more beautiful and accentuate the softness, especially of women's features. So, in that scenario, the DSLR or the mirrorless camera of today would definitely win in that circumstance. The other thing is there's landscape photography. So if you're looking to get into landscape photography, that's where this one comes in pretty close to these. But with landscape photography, you need a wide angle lens. So I would have to trade this lens off and put something smaller on that goes wider, okay? So this is a 100 to 500, which is called a telephoto or basically super telephoto. It's for zooming in on things like wildlife out here, the birds that are far away, subjects that are 50, 100 yards away, and even up to 200 yards, this would be ideal. This is a wide angle lens and I can't zoom in on subjects that are far away. It just basically shoots wide and that's all it does. It gives me 24 millimeters to 105 millimeters, which is a nice range for shooting landscapes. The other thing with the lenses is the price point. A good lens will give you sharp images without a lot of chromatic aberration. And chromatic aberration is where you'll see a subject like bird's wings will have that purple tint along the edges or trees and landscape images. They'll have that tint, whether it's green or purple, along the edge of everything. And good glass, it basically omits chromatic aberration and that's why these lenses are at a higher price point than something like a cell phone. Now, a cell phone, when it comes to your everyday landscape, you can get amazing pictures. This is the Samsung Galaxy S23. For instance, if I'm just going to shoot an image, I can zoom in and out, giving me a range of different... <laughs> What's the play? I can zoom in or out, getting a range of different focal lengths. And this one here actually goes into like a 20 times zoom. So let's use this to do a telephoto image of we'll say a bird now it gives me this little scope over here and let me find let's find a bird here well all the birds out there and i can't find one so there's a bird on the rock right here so let me zoom in on him as you guys can see even with the software cleaning up everything the image itself is not really sharp now if i was to take Say for instance, something like this $10,000 lens with this full frame sensor that grabs a lot of information in and take this and shoot the same scene. I can't get as close as that telephoto lens because I'm maxed out at 500 millimeters. Once I take it, this thing has so many megapixels. I actually lost the image. This thing has so many megapixels I can actually crop in. Let's go back out here the light over here it's the thing about shooting outside and trying to film so if you look at the quality of this image even just directly in the camera as i blow it up and that's blown all the way up you can see even if i crop there's no chromatic aberration right there in the image quality it's just a lot better even the birds to the side look really good so this is the difference between shooting a professional grade camera with a professional grade lens. When you put the two of these together, you get a sensor that grabs more light, that gives you a better image quality, which gives you a better file or bigger file with a lot better information for editing down the road. And the editing process is also a lot better with something like this because it shoots in a raw format. When a lot of cell phones today, they don't do raw format. Raw is basically a file 
with a ton of information that allows you to manipulate the light in the scene. You can bring back highlights. You can pull up shadows and see details that otherwise you would not see in a lower grade cell phone sensor. And that's just the reality of the sensor sizes. When you have something that's bigger and more powerful, it's gonna yield better results. Now, in the very end of things, if you just wanna get into photography and take, we'll say landscapes here and there, that's when I would say, you know what? Just to do a landscape photo, I can get decent photos with my cell phone and they do yield really good results. But as you can see, you can get decent results with a cell phone. It's not the quality of a professional camera, but I've taken a few pictures today. And as you can see through some of the pictures, especially this one, no, I'm just <laughs> let me pull up another picture here. When you want your phone to work, this one, it don't work. Here's one here that I took a few minutes ago. This was probably one of the better images that I got. But when you zoom in, you can really see all the flaws in the image. Now, my professional camera would never take an image with this type of quality. It would be way better than this. Mm -hmm. And that's where the difference comes in of if you want to get birds in flight, wildlife, things like that. This also can't do burst rates, fast shutter speeds. One of the other features of some of the new mirrorless cameras, they'll take 40 sometimes more frames per second. And when I say frames per second, every second you hold down that shutter, you're getting 40 high quality images. So when you're trying to capture action and you might only need one of those images, that one shot might be in that 40 or 50. And some of the new cameras coming out in the next year will shoot over hundred frames a second. This will not shoot burst frames. It will not give you good quality at telephoto ranges and it will not sync to a flash. So there are three uh, crippling hammers or three, there are three serious problems with trying to do professional quality photos with a cell phone. But yet at the same time, some of my favorite images that I've taken over the last decade have been with a cell phone. I've actually got really beautiful images of deer, wildlife, and tons of landscapes using a cell phone. So just because you might not get professional images of a $5,000 or $10,000 camera with this crazy, insane, expensive piece of glass, it shouldn't deter you from taking your cell phone and going out and trying to get the best images you can. One of the things I would recommend is shooting in manual mode so that you can understand shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. That is called your exposure triangle, and your exposure triangle will put you on the right path to having those professional quality images that everybody really admires and wants so much. So I hope this helped you today. Please like, share, subscribe if anything did help you. And feel free to comment below as I'll get back to you as soon as I can and try to give you the answers that you're searching for. Thank you so much. This is Dion here at Photo Beast. Until next time, keep your hand on the shutter. See you around.